Woman posts selfie with perfect Tinder date, but hours later cops sweep in. In many ways, the advent of the internet and smartphone technology has made dating easier than ever. Meeting someone is as simple as swiping right, and many people have found long-term relationships and even marriages as a result of online dating. Still, that doesn't mean these platforms provide foolproof ways to meet your perfect match. There are some very important things that you just can't learn about a person from an online profile. Warina Wright learned the hard way about the dangers of meeting someone online. She thought she'd been matched with a great guy on Tinder when she saw a man named Gable Tosti, but their first date turned out to be a true nightmare. Like many young people these days, Warina Wright and Gable Tosti first met through the popular dating app Tinder. Only, what would begin as a fun and exciting match would quickly take a sinister turn. Warina was 26 years old and originally from New Zealand, but she was staying in Queensland, Australia, for a few weeks to help prepare for and attend her friend's wedding. It was toward the end of her stay that she was matched with Gable. The two began exchanging messages, and before long, things started to heat up. They decided they would meet offline, and Warina learned that Gable lived very close to the Sufis Paradise Resort where she was staying. CCTV footage of Warina and Gable's first meeting at the resort's shopping area showed the pair greeting each other for the first time by exchanging a big hug. They hadn't met in person before, but it seemed like they were already quite comfortable with each other. After their initial rendezvous, they ventured to a nearby bar for a drink. Afterward, the pair headed back to Gable's place, but what exactly transpired after they arrived at his apartment and became intimate remained unclear. Either way, it led to something horrifying. Over the course of the night, Warina posted a number of selfies with Gable. In the pictures, they appear to be relaxed and having a great time. Only, that good cheer wouldn't prove to last long. At some point during that evening, Warina texted her sister Marisa, and all seemed well. Five and a half hours later, however, and Warina was dead. The circumstances immediately pointed toward foul play. As it just so happened, Gable made an audio recording of their date as a sort of insurance, something he evidently always did in case a dispute occurred on his Tinder dates. The one from his night with Warina revealed that, at some point after they had sex, the two got into an argument. Gable told Warina that she wasn't his kind of girl, and he asked her to leave. You are lucky I haven't chucked you off my balcony, he threatened in the recording. You are not going to collect any of your belongings. You are just going to walk out, and I am going to slam the door on you. Do you understand? If you try and pull anything, I'll knock you out. After that, the tape went silent for a lengthy period, but with what prosecutors later claimed were Warina's gasps for breath and faint apologies interspersed throughout. They alleged that Gable forcibly detained and was choking his Tinder date to death in those minutes. Then, something chilling occurred. The tape recorded Warina saying no, over 30 times in a few short minutes, and what sounded like the sliding door to the balcony in Gable's room opening and closing. Then there was a burst of screaming and Gable cursing to himself. CCTV footage showed Gable leaving his place and going out for pizza before returning to his apartment. When he saw a massive police presence at his building, he immediately decided not to go inside. Around 3 a.m. Gable called his father and asked him to pick him up, saying he might have a little bit of a situation. He explained that he met up with a girl for a date tonight and she started getting really aggressive. He told his father that Warina had gotten drunk and that she started beating him up, so he forced her out onto the balcony and locked her out. Then he claimed that he believed she had jumped off the balcony. At Gable's trial for Warina's murder, the prosecuting attorney claimed that Gable may not have actually pushed her off the balcony, but he intimidated her to the point where she thought climbing over the railing was her only means of escape. An eyewitness by the name of Nick Casey was out on his balcony two floors below Gable's where he said he heard Warina say, I want to go home and cry for help. A moment later, he saw her fall to her death. She fell straight past where I was standing on the balcony, and ricocheted off a few balconies below us and kept going to the ground, he testified. Another witness, Emily Ellis, corroborated his account, and said she saw Warina dangling off Gable's balcony trying to escape. After both sides rested their case, a jury of six women and six men went to deliberate. The process was grueling, but after three days they returned with a verdict. Gable Tosti was found not guilty on charges of murder and manslaughter and walked from the courtroom a free man.